Hi everyone, I'm Miss Karen at Adams Memorial Library and I am here today with our library friends, Diantha and Dandelion and Bryony and Rosie to talk about some books that they found to share with you this week. The books this week are all about food. Oh, whether it's pizza, yummy oranges, broccoli, tomatoes, mm, maybe something with honey, good stuff all good stuff and we've got some books about good stuff too so the books for this week are our table written and illustrated by peter h reynolds fry bread a native american family story which was written by kevin noble maillard and the illustrations are by juana martinez neal this one is called What's Cooking in Flowerville? Recipes from Balconies, Rooftops, and Gardens, which was written and illustrated by Felicita Sala. And finally, Frankie's Favorite Food, which was written and illustrated by Kelsey Garrity Riley. So let me tell you a little bit more about these books. Now in this first one that Diantha liked, Our Table, Violet, really likes her family's table. And she's got lots of good memories of being at the table. She remembers gathering the food and setting the table, cooking the meals, lighting candles, having special meals around this table and talking and laughing and having a wonderful time around the table. Except that doesn't happen as much anymore. Often Violet's the only one at the table because her family's really busy. It happens. Um, you know, they've got shows to watch, they've got texts to send, they've got games to play. You know, everybody's got stuff to do, but Violet still remembers when they all could sit around the table. But then one day she goes past the dining room where the table is and oh, thinks it's getting smaller and smaller. It's so small that fits in her hand and then <gasps> disappeared. But it is okay because Violet has an idea of what to do and she can use all the technology that is part of her family into maybe doing something that brings them together and maybe even brings them together around a new table. So if you check this book out from the library, our table, you can find out exactly what Violet's plan was. And I think it was very clever. She does a good job. I like Violet, she's very resourceful. Now this story is called Fry Bread and the author, Kevin Noble Maillard gives his recipe for fry bread, but he says that everybody has their own recipe for fry bread. Everybody does their own way of doing it. And fry bread is made by Native Americans. And there's a list of many, many, many Native American tribes. And if you asked any of these people, they might all have a different way to do fry bread. And he says fry bread is something that you make for special meals, like Violet wanted to have special meals at the table. It's not an everyday, everyday kind of bread because, you know, you gotta make it and mix it up, make it from scratch, and then you have to fry it. So it does, um, it's special because it does require some trouble. And it came about when Native American people, we didn't have anything else to eat when they couldn't grow their own food anymore, when they couldn't hunt their own food, they had ingredients so that they could still make fry bread. And so it says fry bread is all kinds of things. It means all kinds of things. It means shape, you can make it round, you can make it flat, you can make it puffy. The sound you can hear when it's sizzling in the pan Fry bread is color. Maybe some people make it really dark and crispy. Maybe some people make it really light and golden and puffy. 
and fry bread is flavor because you can eat it a lot of different ways. You could eat it with honey, you could eat it with beans, you could eat it with tomatoes, lots of different things you can do with fry bread. So if you wanna learn more about fry bread, why it's made, how it was made, and maybe try some of your own, you can check out fry bread from the library. Now in the town of Flowerville, everybody likes good food and a lot of them grow the ingredients themselves. But even if they don't have room to put a garden, maybe they don't have a yard because they're living in a city, they can do a garden on top of the roof or in a balcony. And all year long, they grow stuff no matter what the month is, they have something that they can eat. And so this book has a recipe for each month of the year. For example, in October, people were making butternut squash cake and this part of the city. In November, if you're looking for a recipe now, you could meet, make roasted beet dip. So it's a time where you could get root vegetables like beets. If you like beets, you can make dip out of it. If you're not sure if you like beets, maybe this would be a good way to try it. In December, maybe you could cook up some potatoes. They grew their potatoes and now they have them in the cellar in the basement to keep them all winter. And in January, these people have some herbs growing on their balcony and so they made lemon bean dip for themselves. So if you'd like to try different recipes and if you're interested in, you know, making something different every month, this could be the book for you. You can check out what's cooking on flower, what's cooking in Flowerville. Maybe it could be cooking at your house too. I think that Frankie from this book would like that book about Flowerville because Frankie loves so many different kinds of foods. He thinks food's great. Donuts are great, but so are a lot of other things. Oh, bacon. Frankie loves bacon too. And all the kids in Frankie's class are talking about their favorite foods because it's the end of the school year play and all of the students are dressing up as their favorite foods, except Frankie. And it's not because Frankie doesn't have, well, it kind of is because he doesn't have one favorite. Frankie has lots and lots and lots of favorites and he says he just can't choose. He loves pizza, but he also loves cakes. He loves broccoli. He loves potatoes, he loves hamburgers, he loves so many things. How could he possibly choose just one? So then he thinks maybe he can mix it up a little. So he asks his teacher, could I be pancakes topped with tomato soup and sprinkled with popcorn? Um, the teacher says, I'm, I'm not sure that's a real dish. Ooh, ooh, how about a plate of nachos with spring rolls and marzipan on top? Um, maybe could we simplify a bit, Frankie? teacher says, oh, what about a fish stick, olive, pad thai, parmesan, kimchi, couscous, pickle, hummus, and cheesecake sandwich? Uh, oh dear, says the teacher. I don't know. I don't think it would be my favorite, but hey, Frankie likes it. But his teacher is a very good teacher. Ms. Mellon has a great idea. She says, maybe you could be a costume manager and help everybody else with their costumes. Oh, here's somebody who's avocado. They might be sushi, cupcakes. So that's a great job for Frankie. But what happens if there's problems with the costumes on the day of the play? Will Frankie be able to save the day as a costume manager? You can check this book out from the library and find out, and maybe it'll give you some ideas of, you know, new, fo new food combinations that you'd like. If you would like any of these food books, you can just come to the library and check them out. You can come down to the children's room. We'll have some of them uh, available on display in the children's room. You can always reserve them and pick them up through curbside service if you'd rather. So thank you very much for joining me and our library friends here, and we will be back next week with some more books to talk about. Thank you, everybody. Bye.